Hi guys, it's Claire Berry here, Clary Berry, and I am here to talk to you guys today a little bit about Weston A. Price and their um, their take on vitamin A. Um, as some of you may know, I had a friend when I first went vegetarian who posted the vegetarian tour from Weston A. Price on my public Facebook page, and at first I was pretty offended. I was like, uh, really? Like, if you were really that concerned, like, why would you post it in front of everybody, you know? And, you know, I got over the ego part of it, and I said, you know what, maybe she's just doing this because she really cares. Maybe she read all of this crazy long thing, and, and maybe she really, you know, believes it and really just cares. So I went ahead and read it and looked into it, and this vitamin A stuff is the first, it's it's quite high up on the page, so I got to it first, and it was really, really um, kind of scary for me because it says right here, Unfortunately, the vast majority of popular books on nutrition insist that humans can obtain vitamin A from fruits and vegetables. You're like, what? And then it says, even worse, FDA regulations allow food processors to label keratin, keratins as vitamin A. The label for a can of tomatoes says that tomatoes contain vitamin A, even though the only source of true vitamin A in the tomatoes is a microscopic insect parts. Really? Okay. So just judging from this and their stance it, it you're like what anybody who knows anything knows that there's vitamin a in carrots and tomatoes right so why would they say this well if you keep on going they admit that humans can convert carotenes to vitamin a they refuse though to say the word pro vitamin or anything like that they just want to act like you know something completely different and blah 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 they say that well for one and I'm not against this really they say that it's a little bit less your conversion is a little bit less than retinol and um, that's fine and it makes perfect sense as to why you can overdose on it and you can't overdose on veggie forms of um, vitamin A so um, Obviously, it's just really shady of them to start out like that and act like you can't get, and it's so crazy that you would even think about getting your vitamin A from tomatoes or something, you know, when obviously it's not the case. It says you would have to eat, right here, you would have to eat an awful lot of vegetables and fruits to obtain the daily requirements. Okay, so, yeah, I think I'm pretty good because guess what? I am a raw vegan and I do eat a lot of vegetables. And not only that, but my body is used to it, which is something that um, we'll touch on here in a few minutes. Um, really what I want to talk about is that they say, they go on to say that, you know, this transformation from carotene to retinol is rarely optimal. They say that um, people who have diabetes, it's just, they cannot convert it at all. They say that, and they say that children cannot convert it very well at all either. Um, they say that infants can't do it at all. And basically also that if you exercise, if you're an alcoholic or a drug user or have other deficiencies or even cold weather can hinder the conversion of carotenes to vitamin A. And kind of like what I was just saying with that, if you're an alcoholic and obviously you're not used to eating a bunch of like raw foods, then yeah, your body is not going to have those enzymes to break those down very well. It's not going to be used to it and it's going to take your body a while you know, of eating healthy and eating those foods before it is creating sufficient enough enzymes for you to get all of those nutrients out of it. Studies like this and, and books like this that want to say, and sites like this that want to say stuff like that, they're not taking that into consideration at all. I mean, I'm sure if you look at the, you know, alcoholics, you know, absorption of anything, it's going to be low. So it's really a non-issue. But what did get me was the children. Um, because I have children and we were going vegetarian and I of course didn't you know want to put my children at risk <coughs> <coughs> excuse me you got some sinus problems from this polar, polar vortex thing so anyway basically they say that you know children can't they just can't get enough so I looked at the sources that they listed for this and down at the bottom you can see that the sources that they used were two books, okay, to say these things. And I'm not exactly sure which claim, it doesn't say like exactly which claim is for the book and which I wasn't sure if it was the cold weather or all of it or whatever. Um, 
but I just I just thought it was interesting that there are books. Anybody can write a book. You don't need to be, you know, a scholarly, you know, scientist or anything to write a book. Anybody can write a book. And you can say whatever you want in it. And it can be fiction and people could pass it off as truth. Like it doesn't matter. And not only are they books, but they're old books, okay? The one was from 1990s, and the other one is from 1970, published in 1970. So the research that was done for that book, uh, if any real research was done, it was done prior to that. So we're talking like 55 years ago, 55-year-old research, okay? Well, let's see what some newer studies have to say about this, okay? Um, very, very simple. Just went into... Um, Google Scholar, which I love. Anybody who's really wanting to get to the bottom of things should go to Google Scholar. And, you know, hundreds of studies pop up. I mean, hundreds. I could I could sit here and talk about this all day. Um, just for the sake of a short video, though, I'm just going to talk about the first two that I happen to find. Um, and we're talking about um, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, check the author affiliations. There's no... What is going on? Stupid ads. Okay. So one of them, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. This is from 2002. Um, this is, was a study in Vietnam where they have a concern about vitamin A deficiency. They have some fruit. Uh, it's a big long word. I don't know how to say it. But the fruit has a lot of vitamin A. And what they do is they eat it with a rice. That's um, The dish is called soy gok. And I'm not sure exactly how to say that. But soy gok is how we'll say it for this video. So their study was to assess the beta-carotene rich rice preparation as a source of pro-vitamin A for the children. So they studied these kids, they checked their blood and all of that, and the results were obviously that they had higher groups and that this soy gok is a good source of pro-vitamin A carotenoids. They even go so far as to say that severely anemic children might particularly benefit from this fruit. So that is one study that I easily found at my fingertips that proves Weston A. Price dead wrong, no pun intended. The other one that I found so easily, same um, journal, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Again, check the author affiliations. This one's about sweet potatoes, OFSP, orange flesh sweet potato. Talking about how um, again, de developing countries and how this could be a really good um, role, really good staple food and play a role in controlling vitamin A deficiency. Just like Weston A. Price was saying, you know, that we should go send over these, these nutrients and, and these supplements and these pills and we should fly them over there and drop them off and that'll be great. Well, you know, it's that whole quote of you lead a fish to water, you know, but no, 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 I'm getting, I'm getting two of mine mixed up. I'm a little sidetracked here. You can teach a man to fish, you know, which is better, giving a man a fish or teaching him to fish. These people need ways to grow their own food for their own communities, not for us to come in and be their saviors and then they'd be in debt to us. So <coughs> the, the conclusion says that yes, these orange fleshy uh, sweet potatoes can play a significant role in developing countries as a viable long-term food-based strategy for controlling vitamin A deficiency in children, okay? So obviously, they were very easy to prove wrong here. I think it's funny that they act like they're so scientific because they're not. Okay, so obviously I proved that wrong. Now let's go on to this other aspect of vitamin A, okay? And they even say right here that vitamin A toxicity is a myth, okay? They want to say that basically it's, here, I'll quote it, unless you are an Arctic explorer, it's virtually impossible to develop vitamin A toxicity from food. The putative toxic dose of 100,000 international units per day would be contained, and then they give this long list of foods that seem like it would be impossible to eat, right? Keep in mind, 100 international units a day, okay? And like I said, 
three tablespoons of liver oil, six tablespoons of liver oil, two and a half 100 gram servings of duck, three 100 gram servings of beef liver, seven pounds of butter or 390 egg yolks. I mean, it sounds crazy, okay? So they want you to think that, oh, nobody's gonna eat that much. Keep that in mind. The other thing they say right in this paragraph is that even vitamin A, synthetic vitamin A, like we're sending over to these children in third world countries, you know, is not toxic because look, we're giving them 100,000 units a day, a day and that's for the whole year, okay? We're giving them two 200,000 doses for over 12 months and they're not dying from vitamin A toxicity. Well, first of all, just because your synthetic vitamin A is similar to retinol or is retinol doesn't mean that it's the same as the kind that you can overdose on. So that's one issue. And then also there's the issue of, well, these kids are probably already so low on vitamin A that this much vitamin A is not gonna make them go over the limits. So there's a few different things there that you can, um, you can look at if you even, I mean, I haven't even looked that up. Knowing them, they made this up or it came from a shoddy source. I haven't even got that far yet. So, um, going back up to where they talk about this. Oh yeah, okay, okay. You just heard the list of the foods that make it sound like it would be really hard to get to that 100,000 units per day, but if you are smart, then you know that really for Weston A. Price people, it's not going to be that difficult to hit that. I mean, high vitamin cod liver oil has 230 international units per 100 grams. Yeah, you're probably not drinking 100 grams of cod liver oil, so we'll put that out. But if you're still keeping in mind the um, levels, the 100,000 unit, the putative limit, Beef liver is at 35,000. All the livers are about, you know, duck liver is 40,000, lamb liver is 25,000. So let's just say you're having some butter, okay? You're going to get about 650 units from that, okay? And I just kind of made, I went to chronometer.com, which I love for my raw vegan diet. And I'm just putting in basic, like, a pretty light day, what I would think, and what I've seen that people on this diet eat. I've, I've looked a lot into it, and people on message boards at mothering.com and different things like that. And um, this is what they eat. This is what a lot of them eat. I'm not saying this is what everybody eat, but this is just an example of how crazy this diet is. And again, I'm just going to talk about vitamin A. I'm not even going to talk about fats. I'm not going to talk about protein. I'm not going to talk about the nutrients. I'm not going to talk about any of it except for just vitamin A right now. So we will definitely be visiting Chronometer later when talking about Weston A. Price people and their diet. But let's say you wake up and you have breakfast. Just two little eggs with um, some bacon. Three slices of bacon. Let's say you have some liver and like just two little ounces of liver for lunch um, with some quinoa, two cups of quinoa, banana smoothie, um, get some grass-fed beef for dinner, maybe a little steak, you know, 12 ounces. Um, don't forget your cod liver oil supplement, a few glasses of milk, um, and a, a, some more butter, maybe with some carrots um, drained, and then a salad, just mixed salad, whatever, so you have your veggies in there, okay? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, when you're looking at the liver, the liver alone is giving you 17,827, okay, units. The, fit, the oil, the cod liver oil is giving you 2,664. With the butter and everything else for this day, you would be at... 26,614.13 units. So, um, granted, this is less than the 100,000 per day, but if you go to wikipedia.com, and this is a site that uses real, real links. If you look at the bottom, the link for the particular um, excerpt that I'm gonna read you is the Food and Nutrition Board Institute of Medicine, okay? going up we are looking at about middle of the page here pathophysiology 
the U.S. Institute of Medicine says that the lowest observed adverse effect level for vitamin A when taken over an extended period of time is 21,600. So you can have adverse effects from eating a very light, a very minimalistic, which most people I don't think they do. I don't think they're just having three pieces of bacon, you know, just a little bit of milk, you know, and all and two ounces of, of liver. I mean, it's if they're really into this diet, you know, and, and not only that, so I just showed you, it's very easy to get 2,600. The lowest uh, adverse level is 2,100, and that is for adults. Keep in mind, the level for women that you should not go over is 10,000. And keep in mind also, these studies, these people that are saying all this, this is not just the one study that Weston A. Price tried to debunk. You know, there's a lot of other people out there saying this stuff. So I don't see why Weston A. Price wants to take one or two books and put them against this whole world of evidence. And, and you can't just say that it's only, you know, these great amounts like in seal blubber and all of this stuff and whale blubber. It's not. U.S. Institute of Medicine says 21,600 international units per day over an extended period of time. That was the link that I listed to you before that. Now, the other issue is since we're so concerned with children here, and I know a lot of people, I know a lot of Weston A. Price people, they're letting their kids drink this raw milk, they're letting their kids eat the butter, they're just, I mean, the butter is in everything, so how can you not eat it? And so they're getting their vitamin A from that way. They're also going ahead and feeding their kids these liver. They're talking about how can we sneak this liver in their food so they'll t so they'll eat it, even though they obviously don't want to eat it, um, which is a whole other issue in itself. Um, there's no listing of the limits for children. But again, Wikipedia says that the U.S. Institute of Medicine has established levels for um, preventing the risk of vitamin A toxicity in children and babies. So the levels are for zero to three years old, it's only 2,000 units, okay? Three years old, 2,000 units. So I guarantee you, if you're feeding your kid basically anything on this diet, on the Weston A. Price diet, you're going over that 2,000 units. 2,000 units is nothing. The beef, the two ounces of, of beef liver is 17,000, okay? So if you're giving them any liver at all, basically you're giving your kid too much liver um, and too much vitamin A. So I just really don't get why you would want too much vitamin A. There's no studies that say too much vitamin A is good for you. The only thing that the Weston A. Price people are saying at this point is that, oh, well, the traditional cultures used to do it. They used to eat up to 50,000 a day. Well, hence up to, okay, um, that doesn't necessarily mean they were able to do that all year round. And their bodies were actually used to it. And th that has been proven. You can look that up. Not only did their ancestors eat high levels of vitamin A, but their parents did, why they were conceiving them, why they were breastfeeding. When they were kids, they ate higher, higher levels, and their bodies got used to it. That does not mean, like Sally Fallon writes that, or whoever was the author of that page, writes that we should be able, aiming for to get that much in our diet. I mean, it's crazy. And they even, I mean, they say it right here. The recommended daily allowance is... Currently, 5,000 may possibly be lowered to 2,500 per units per day. From the work of Weston A. Price, we can assume that the amount in primitive diets was about 50,000 per day. So it's an assumption, first of all, a big assumption. And they go on to say, which could be achieved in a modern diet by consuming generous amounts of whole milk, blah, 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 blah. So do you see how they totally contradict themselves? Because earlier in this page, they were saying, how hard it would have to be to just reach, you know, 100,000. So, but yet it's so easy to get just half that. Well, I'm not buying it, guys. I'm just not buying it. So don't forget to always, always, always check your sources. Check those studies. Look it up. Check the author affiliations. And please, guys, Especially, no matter what you're eating, but especially if you eat a Weston A. Price or a diet high in fat, I really want you to go to Chronometer, type in what you're eating, 
and look at your nutrients. You are going to be way over in fat, way over in vitamin A, and many other things. So please just start using your critical thinking. I'm begging you. Weston A. Price wants you to feed your kids all of this stuff, and they're not even acknowledging that there's units. They're not even acknowledging that it's possible. They think the only things you can overdose on are seal, walrus, moose, and it's just ignorant. It's it's not even ignorant. It's lies. And this was how, like I said, when I first started realizing that Weston A. Price is not just stupid. They're shady. So eat your fruit, guys. Stay healthy and steer clear of Weston A. Price.